where did the journey start and where did it end? Well, I guess everybody who, who has a boat has... Um, the great question about a boat is how far can you go with it? People always say, how many does she sleep? No, no. The question is how far can you go with it? And I had built my own boat with the intention of making long voyages and then that just hadn't worked out from various events in my life and so forth. But I still had this notion that, that at some point I wanted to make a long trip in a boat. Um, and in my early 60s, I suddenly realized that, you know, if I was going to do this, I, I, I should ideally do it in my 40s. Since that wasn't possible, I'd better do it in my 60s or I wouldn't do it at all. And this particular trip, I thought, well, this is, a, in a sense, this is a, this is a trip that sort of anybody can do. You don't have to be any great, uh, you know, wonderful navigator or, you know, yo-ho, um, uh, challenge the elements kind of seaman. Uh, it's basically you're just doing a little coastal cruising down the coast 30, 40 miles a day. Once or twice we had a little more adventure than that. You know, the coast of New Jersey is 100 miles and, and that was a rough passage. And, um, but mostly it's a pretty straightforward kind of proposition. And uh, so I thought, well, this is the time to do it. And it goes through all these fascinating places. I mean, if you start as we did in Cape Breton and you end up in the Bahamas, you have gone through or near or around, you know, Boston, Philadelphia, New York, Charleston, Savannah, St. Augustine, just all kinds of great, great places. And uh, so in a certain sense, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's like an RV trip, isn't it? It's a nice way to get to a lot of interesting places. Best moment of the trip? Well, the one that, that, that uh, I guess immediately comes to mind is the first day in the Bahamas. We had crossed the Gulf Stream, which is a big obstacle and, and can be quite rough. And our crossing was fairly rough. Because it um, wants to take you all the way back to Nova Scotia. That's right. It would, ha would happily take you to Ireland if you let it. You know, it just curls right across the Atlantic. So this is a sort of north running river in the sea. And when you get a northerly wind opposed to it, you get a very short, steep, uh, sharp chop. And that uh, goes on most of the winter. There are little gaps in between it. And we'd chosen one of those windows and we'd gone. But it wasn't really terribly, it wasn't a calm passage. It wasn't a terribly rough one, but it wasn't a calm one. But then the next morning, we had this glorious halcyon day, beautiful, not a cloud in the sky, you know, and you know, 75 degrees uh, in the air temperature. We're in the Bahamas, and we, we, uh, we went to Great Sail Key that, that day. And so here we are traveling in this gorgeous uh, turquoise water over, it's only about 12 feet deep. You can see the bottom going by. There's one other boat that's a companion boat going with you. Um, every, it's just like it's just like a, a sort of a crystalline summer day. A um, little bit of wind, enough to sail, not enough to give you any kind of uh, any kind of grief. And it was just like you'd gotten the bonus for the, all the the effort of we'd been we were eight months on the voyage, and we'd been six months to the day from the day we left um, uh, Cape Breton till the day we left Florida. So six months of effort to get down south, and then finally we had actually gotten into the Bahamas. That was a glorious moment. That was an absolutely absolutely wonderful day. Uh, worst moment of the trip? There I'd pick two, and one of them was the day in Jonesport when I misjudged the approach to the wharf. See, I'd never sailed with an engine before. I, my previous boat had no engine, and so I didn't really know how to handle a boat with an engine. I learned by the time we got to the Bahamas, but I hadn't learned by the time we got to Jonesport, so I misjudged, and I really hit the wharf hard, and there was a bolt sticking out of the wharf that just tore a rip right down the side of the, uh, the bow. Uh, we patched it up and went on, but the, but that was really a sickening moment, you know, when you suddenly thought, I could really wreck this boat and, and uh, things could go really badly. Um, the second bad one would be probably the passage off the coast of New Jersey, a really dangerous coast, long, a long, shallow coastline. Um, you know, the, wa the, the shallow water reaches away out to sea. And uh, we were having some engine trouble. We had to put in part way down through the coast and down the coast in Manasquan and do some work on the engine. And then went out and got our, found ourselves in an ex unexpected gale um, with about 80 miles before we could find any place to tuck in. That was not a that was not a pleasant night. I remember the, the engine died when I went running out on deck, and here was the where these seas sort of curling up around us. I looked behind and looked at a white cap that was well above my head and thought, oh, what am I doing? You know, am I doing this for pleasure? Is this fun? <laughs> Why am I here? <laughs> you know, the problem with writing a book like this is they're going to want a sequel. <laughs> I mean, just like, I finished and went, well, wonder what his next adventure is going to be. It's like, Silver Donald Cameron in the Bermuda Triangle. I, that's just, <laughs> it's a working title. You can take it if you want. <laughs> But I just, but I wanted, I wanted more. 
I'm not sure if Marjorie is up for it. <laughs> it may be a divorce if there's a sequel. Well, and since then I've had a, something that approached a heart attack, and that's given us some pause to wonder whether we have more voyaging in our in our future. It wasn't very serious, and I think we probably I probably can continue to sail. But for the last six months, we've been really kind of holding that idea up to the light and saying, or, "Am I up for it?" But you know, the one the other thing is there's the prequels. I mean, the the uh, the early earlier sailing books are still in print. Um, one of them is not uh, sniffing the coast, but it will be within a month or so, um, back in print. And uh, you know, those are still available. So I hope one of the things that people like you will do is to say. Gee, he's written w Wind, Whales, and Whiskey. He's written Sniffing the Coast. He's written a book about cruising on the Blue Nose. Um, let's go and get those. And he's written a novel about cruising, too, Dragon Lady, back in 1980. I'm, I'm glad that the uh, good Shookman crew of the, of the, of the Magnus uh, made it home all right. Thank you very much. The book is Sailing Away from Winter. I've been speaking with the author, Silver Donald Cameron, and Sailing Away from Winter, a cruise from Nova Scotia to Florida and beyond is published by McCollum and Stewart. It's a Douglas Gibson book.